Good morning world and welcome to another house build update here in the Philippines. If you don't know who we are and this is the first video of ours you've ever seen, we have been living on the island of Chagao for the last three years. Absolutely beautiful place to live and so we decided that we wanted to build our own home here. We're a British family, came here before the pandemic and then just stayed because we fell in love with the Philippines. We are currently though in the process of trying to have a Kubo modular home built, an engineered bamboo house here on the island of Chagao and things are not going to plan, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> As you see from the title of the video, another update, another house update, when we don't really have a house to show yet, yeah. but we are still going back and forth trying to get the design nailed <laughs> and it hasn't happened yet. I don't think our bamboo house idea is going to work out the way that we initially planned and today we're going to show you why we think that because it has changed so much since the first video we made yeah. about this. We thought it was going to be super simple and uh, due to various variables it hasn't so let us begin at the start. So we're going to start off by showing you a bit of the evolution of how this house build house plan has been going for us and how it's evolving starting with the initial floor plan that we had to work with so the kubo team sent us this because it is the base floor for the showroom that we went to sit in in manila when we visited their factory this next image is an actual mock-up of what that showroom was so again, we've sat inside this layout in reality. We know what it feels like, the size, everything. And at the time we were totally happy with this size, but we wanted to adjust the layout to add a bathroom and a second bedroom for story. So that's how it all began. So our communication with Kubo has been done via virtual meetings, which we've been doing on the computer and also through WhatsApp messages, and we're basically communicating with like a sales team member and one of the lead architects who then speaks to the engineer. So we go back and forth with sketches. They send me a floor plan. I do a drawing. He sends it to the architect and the architect says whether or whether it can't be done. So this was my first sketch. The very first sketch that I drew on top of the original showroom floor plan showing the downstairs of what we wanted. This has appeared in one of the vlogs already. You can see it's the same layout. I've just added a few things like the bathroom here and I made the bedroom smaller. And I also added an upstairs section because this floor plan is only about 50 square meters and like we wanted it to be 100 square meters plus. So we figured 50 square meters for the downstairs, 50 square meters for the upstairs and decking and stuff would be extra. So that was where we stood with it and they began drawing. So off these sketches went over to Architect and he started trying to work out if it was actually possible to do for the budget that we can afford. And oh, this, is, this is the key the, problem the, here. Yeah, the budget that we had set. And you'll also notice in this one, we had a bathtub as well yeah. inside. So this is kind of our like <laughs> imagination running, everything that we could think that we would like. You know, we've got his and her sink, we've got a bathtub for story, we've got a deck off of the bedroom, which is something I really wanted because that's something I really would like to have in our current living situation, just be able to open the doors and be outside. So, and also the mezzanine was something that we all wanted because it looks cool and it adds an extra space as well. It's somewhere that we can put all of Story's books up there and a bean bag and a chill out zone. And also if you have guests, you've got that bit of extra space where you can put a futon and someone can sleep up there. So that is the original <laughs> yeah. idea. And having the mezzanine there, it doesn't get rid of that open plan feel when you walk in. So it was kind of a non-negotiable. We really wanted to have the mezzanine. Yeah. And also because Kubo's original template designs, they all had a mezzanine. Yes. So we figured it's not hard for them to do this. You know, yeah. it should be able to be done within budget. We're not over asking, which we're not, but things got a bit confusing. So after those sketches were sent over to Kubo, this is what was sent back to us. We had a little virtual chat about it and they did a walkthrough in 3D and it mimics what we had drawn, but there were some key things that were very different. For example, like I'd drawn a mezzanine that went all the way across from here to here, 
And now that this ladder had appeared in the middle and um, so it was looking a lot smaller, the bathroom had lost the bathtubs because apparently we couldn't fit them into the floor plan. So, okay, understood. Everything just looked a little bit tighter. And then when we saw the upstairs of this same layout, I could see that this wasn't a proper wall. It was like an open deck thing. Like this was now the mezzanine and there was no second bathroom. So we were thinking, hang on, what's going on here? What happened to the sketch? Has there been a misunderstanding? So lots of talking back and forth and lots of clarification on what we really wanted out of this space. And we slowly realized that the major problem here was the fact that we were going two floors. So the Kubo company specializes in kind of tiny homes, big tiny homes in mm. a way. And the second floor is always kind of like a mezzanine in a roof space. So to add the second floor that we were asking for was racking our budget right out of the park. And they were yeah. trying to remove things to make it possible for us to have what we were asking for. So at this stage, we were like, well, hang on a minute. Like we didn't know that adding the second floor was going to cost so much. We didn't really particularly care if it was a two story building or not. So again, lots of communication back and forth. If you heard some strange noises for coming from behind Jay, <laughs> some strange scratching noises and huffs, it's our Filipino Aspen who's hiding behind there scratching herself. <laughs> <laughs> she's always around, isn't she? She likes to be close. Yeah. Although she's a bit camera shy today, she doesn't yeah. want to come in. Come well, on. Normally she's in the middle. There, there we go. go. Show yourself while I get the next there images you go. ready. Hello, Poppy. Yeah, you're resting today. Oh, you want more? Okay. Okay. You're very needy. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So we had a big long chat and we eventually realized that it would be a lot cheaper for us to have a bigger single story house. So we haven't actually said this in the public vlogs yet, but the house has you know, been gone from a two story <laughs> mini house to a much wider single story house. This drawing that you're looking at right now was my next sketch. So it was the middle of the night and I got excited about like <laughs> new ideas and I hadn't really done any um, clarification with the team. I just started drawing stuff. So I scaled up the floor plan to 118 square meters based on the elements that I had from the original drawings. And I started putting things in, the, in a single story house. And I soon realized that you could have a third bedroom. So I thought this is amazing. Like, you know, by bringing it down to a single story, the budget goes down. We don't have to spend so much money and we get third bedroom. And because Grandad had just been to visit, yeah. we were like, oh, do you know what? Having a third bedroom would be so nice. So yeah. we can just kind of have a guest in a separate space. And, you know, just it feels good long term to have that kind of layout. So I got really excited. I drew in all this storage. And if anything, it felt a bit too big. And I sent that drawing over to the team. I was like, here you go, guys. I'm really excited to show you my latest sketch, you know. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, sure. We'll send it to the architect and get back to you. So the next part of the story, we had another virtual meeting with the team after they tried to make this work for us. Okay, can you see me? I can see you, no, yes. Wait. Oh, there, there we go. And everything just felt a bit odd <laughs> because the house from the outside, looking at the mock-up, the 3D mock-up of the house yeah. looked amazing. Super happy with it. I was like, wow, that's gonna look so cool in the land. But as soon as the architects did like the walkthrough and we went inside, it was the same kind of layout but it just felt really small and cramped. Yeah, it felt like a caravan. Yeah, some key elements were missing as well. Mm. Like the mezzanine was gone completely. Yeah, the third bedroom was gone. Was gone. <laughs> but they had kept the two bathrooms, but because the space was now so much smaller, having two bathrooms back to back to each other, like almost a mirror copy, just felt ridiculous. We were like, why would we have two bathrooms? So the idea was that our bedroom the master bedroom would have an ensuite of some kind so yeah. you would have a shower room and a toilet as part of the bedroom for jay and i and then you would also have a common bathroom for story and for the guest room or just you know when we're not in the bedroom <laughs> and so that was the idea of having two bathrooms and story obviously still gets a full-size room yeah we still had the decks outside now the kitchen yeah. and the master bedroom and there would have been maybe a deck here at the front of the yeah. house as well and so the bedrooms were much smaller as well so all that was really in them were the beds and that was it there wasn't any room to have a 
desk or really to kind of feel like a spacious bedroom yeah it was just the beds really and a, maybe a small table and it just felt too small for us it would have been absolutely fine if we were thinking of just having a rentable property that we would rent out for holidays something or if it was our holiday home somewhere that we would go to yeah, you know just for a month or so at a time but because we're talking about our permanent house here family house somewhere that we want to live long term as a family with pets and a child and also bring visitors to it was just way too small so it was at this point that we realized where the problem lies and it was in our budget so they were trying to make everything happen within that budget but we weren't properly talking about when it was going over and why so for example when they first said adding the second floor the reason why the budget was going up so much was because it was no longer stormproof so to make a two-story house stormproof it was going to cost maybe an extra million pesos which we didn't have so they were trying to remove things to make it a different setup it's the same thing with this this floor plan here that i drew was based on like 118 square meters flat out and they were like well with the decks and everything that's actually going to be more than 118 square meters going to be bigger the material cost so they scaled it right down to something about this size and tried to fit everything in that we asked for and it just basically doesn't fit it wasn't didn't physical work, yeah. Yeah. and the fact that the the elements of the design that we were really liking like the mezzanine was now gone the staircase with the holes in it the storage, story really wants the storage staircase gone and things like that so we we were kind of feeling a little bit oh it's not quite what we want at all and also what we hadn't factored in so this beautiful design here was based on 118 square meters but we hadn't factored in that the square meterage also factors in the outside perimeter and the mm. decks so because we had three decks in this uh, scenario as well uh, that was bringing down the living area yeah. which we hadn't realized i mean maybe we should have done but this is our first build project is, though. we don't know yeah we're making mistakes because we're thinking this hundred square meter house we've this got loads great. of room <laughs> it's only three of us it's going to be amazing we're going to have loads of space going to feel really spacious and everything but we didn't factor in the fact that we also want three decks on the outside and that is included in the hundred square meter footage and also our budget yeah so in the end what they did was they said okay how can we what, what are your non-negotiables and we were like it has to be over 100 square meters yeah and it needs to have a mezzanine two yeah. bathrooms and now three bedrooms let's just be clear on that and let's try and make it happen so they were like okay back to the drawing board and they sent us a new floor plan a completely new floor plan which should keep things to a budget we can afford but it was now a rectangle <laughs> <laughs> so this is what i got from kubo with measurements and it's now a really really different shape you know it's like 14 meters plus long and seven and a half meters wide almost with the interior walls and everything now this is still a single story layout so again i got excited and overnight i started sketching in similar from the what drawing before what i thought could be done with it this is as far as i got so we have stories bedroom up here which has its kind of built-in storage there'd be a window under there window on the wall we still have a downstairs bathroom here which would be the common bathroom with a door entering from the kitchen side there we've got the guest bedroom which is tiny like a corridor but then the bed is like a proper king size bed a full size bed. yeah bed. full size yeah. so it'll be more than comfortable enough and the bed would have storage under it we have our master bedroom which is actually massive with storage and the ensuite bathroom here which also has a shower in it so this house would have two shower units in it and this would lead out to a deck which no longer exists <laughs> and this will be the living and dining space which i just got too tired to design this would be the front door the kitchen area is the same a back door and then the mezzanine is back so i just drew in where i think it should go and i was like cool cool what do you guys think so the next day the architect basically said the mezzanine can't work like that it would fall down so if you know without loads of extra budget being spent you need to change the layout and this is what we've ended up with so this is the final drawing to show you guys almost exactly the same as what you just saw but the mezzanine is now much shorter and only covers the kitchen area and goes from the center of the house 
all the way over to the wall and we have walkable space probably about this far into it and then this bit you'd have to sit down and this bit maybe would be cupboards and storage but we can still work with that story still gets her staircase with the little storage bits in it everything else still remains over 100 square meters we all get everything that we want out of it but we've lost the decks the reason for that is so that we can focus our budget on the interior of the house the living space the living area of the house which is what kubo specializes in and what we want them to do for us <laughs> yeah building a house here on the island from scratch seems like a very big task and something that we didn't want to get into just yet from stories that we've heard from other people living here the logistics of it is a bit of a nightmare which is why we went down the Kubo route in the first place. Most of the experiences we've heard from everybody we know here last three years they've all got some horror story to tell so we want Kubo to focus on the living spaces, yeah. things like decks and exterior things and Will whatever. Be we can have island built have it done on, on the, island. the island. Yeah, it's something that can be done here very well, very, very well, easily, yeah. and it's just not so much building a whole entire house that we want to live in for the next five years. So, yeah. so what's good about this is when we have the foundation built. We can have the foundation to accommodate where the decks will be, but they just won't be made out of like the special engineered bamboos, you know, products that Kubo does. They will provide us the house with all the cool stuff inside it, the storage, the most of the furniture, I presume you might have to remove mm. some furniture to stay within budget. And that's another thing that like we've scaled back on what will be included as well. So things like the air conditioning unit is an add-on with Kubo. Not, there's lots of things that you can have as add-ons. Mm, solar um, and... Yeah, which we obviously don't need. We have our own air conditioning and we have our own solar and things like that. But they were included in the price. And we didn't realise until yeah. we actually looked at the breakdown of everything that they said. And we were like, well, we don't need air conditioning. We don't need that. So it freed up at like almost a million pesos. Yeah, of budget. Of budget, because there were lots of add-on things that we don't actually need. Yeah, we've got them already. We already own them. So we're, we're now kind of fully in the communication zone. This is the final stretch. <laughs> we are going... <laughs> yeah, because we are going to visit the Kubo factory in like three weeks yes, in person we are and at that stage we want all this virtual like kind of back and forth to be done with so yeah. that it's like okay guys this is it start putting together the final budget start getting putting together the final plan completely so that we can get it all like signed off in person in the factory yeah. in about three weeks and then you know what's great about that is no matter what's going on with the weather on the island or whatever they could be constructing our house in the warehouse in Manila while we sit here and just kind of prepare <laughs> for their arrival hopefully you know the dream is by the, before this year's yeah. end but we'll see and it all then, depends on whether yeah. we can afford it or not and then there'll be also a lot of other building stuff so we'll, we'll be bringing you along when we go and meet Kubo and we'll see what we can film there but we'll do another house update when we're in Manila when we're actually at the warehouse and we'll update on how that goes and then there'll be other building things that we're going to be doing on the island, like building the perimeter wall, building a driveway, putting mm. a gate in. Getting the road drivable for when the truck comes yeah. to deliver the house. That kind of stuff still yeah. needs to be done. But it doesn't make sense for us to do it all now, like, you know, maybe seven months before they even arrive, because yeah. everything would just overgrow again, like closer to the time. Yeah. So that is the plan for now. This is the latest update. It was only this morning I realised that we hadn't shared that the house had changed down to a single storey and yeah. had changed shape and everything, so well, it, this is part of documenting that. Yeah, we have shared it last week on our Patreon page, so our patrons actually got a little <laughs> sneak peek and a preview into what was going on. So this is now for you guys here. And while we're on the subject of our patrons and our members, we're going to do our very first shout out in the vlog to the very first YouTube member, who is Scarlet Coco Max. So huge thank you to Scarlet for becoming our first member on YouTube. If you don't know what we're talking about, there is a join button underneath and you can get access to our weekend vlogs, which are exclusive and updates behind the scenes, stuff that we do, special badges and emojis that you can do to communicate with each other. And Scarlet Coco Max was the first 
member so a huge thank Ooh. you <laughs> thank you scarlett hello <laughs> and there'll be more shout outs to follow i hope you enjoyed today's house update yes it's complex but we will get there in yes. the end poppy clearly needs some attention <laughs> so <laughs> that is it from us today and we'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>